In this video, we will look at how, what is the steps and process involved in creating a new API and exposing it via the .NET API core. So uh, these are very basic steps uh, to, uh, to understand the .NET APIs and how to create them. So here I have a sample uh, project which, uh, which I have created in, in one of my previous videos. Uh, the the link to which you can find in my description and uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clear off or remove the uh, the controllers uh, before that you know let me go ahead and add a new controller so here uh, I have the option to create an empty controller or a controller with the basic uh, read write actions the HTTP actions and I also can create a MVC controller with this, which is integrated with an entity framework. Now, remember these are the, these are not API controllers. These are the controllers that you would generally use to build your Razor engine based in UI and backend controllers for that. So what I'll go ahead and select is an API and then similar options I have, but here these are API controllers and not MVC controllers. So let me select an empty controller and say add. So um, I'll give the name, let's say I'll call it as uh, demo controllers and then add. So here I have uh, a demo controller which uh, with right now I, there are no actions defined and you could notice the route which is configured here which basically says API slash the route name. So example, if I want to call any of the APIs here, I'll have to give the root URL followed by API slash demo. So in order to create a new controller, uh, let me copy this. So now here, so here I would say get demo data, right? Or this is the name of my uh, API, but the function name, the function name which I have could be it could be anything there is no, as long as i give the name here this is the name that i have to use in the api but now my function name or actual method name could be different so i'll just return a simple string uh, and so let me say return dollar so what i'm basically in creating an API which takes name as an input and then it returns a hello followed by the name. So uh, here I have created a, a controller, a demo controller and a function with the, with the URL as demo data, but I have the function name as get. And now when I save and try to build, I will get the Swagger documentation with a demo uh, APIs also available. So here I have <clears throat> the demo API. So it is expecting me to pass a name. So let's say if I pass call pass name, uh, say chai, and then say click on uh, execute, you will see I'm getting the hello chai. So whenever we want to expose an API, multiple APIs, the key part here is to now I can also uh, expose the API. This is a get API. Now I can also expose. This is a get API. And now I can also expose a post API. Right, and I can say post and, and uh, demo. demo post right so everything remains the same i can as well say i can specify the <clears throat> right so here i'm specifying if you notice here uh, in in the get i'm basically saying name and followed by the parameter if i want uh, i can specify the name parameter uh, to be passed as a body instead of the url there are options where I can say from body or from URI query string. So you can specify the parameter name 
do you want do you are you expecting or do you want the user to send it as a query string in the route or as part of a form body so you can decide specify each of the parameter how you would want to get so i'm specifying it as a uh, body and now if i go ahead and run so um, yeah i have the post body now so i will say try it out it is expecting me to send the body uh, again i'll say chai and execute so here again i have the hello chai so this is the basic step on creating a, a controller and exposing a get and the post api uh, the key thing you need to know is how do you pass the parameters and whether it's from the body or from the uri